Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fashion Avenue News, where only the best will do. I'm your host, Sophia Davis, and today we have an absolutely fabulous guest for you. Before we start our interview, let's say hello to our sponsors. First up, Bling Darling Couture. I am wearing the lovely Bling Darling Couture sunglasses and the Queen of Style necklace. The necklace is by the Queen of Style. We'll be right back in just a moment. gentlemen, we are back on Fashion Avenue News. And I have the amazing Terry McDonald here, fabulous makeup artist. She is amazing. I am so happy to have you on the show, Terry. How are you? I'm doing well, Sophia, and yourself. Thank you for having me and inviting me. Well, I have been seeing your work. And darling, you are really doing an amazing job in the makeup industry. So we're going to dive right into the interview and find out how did you start in makeup, Terry? So I started, I started with makeup um, back in, two, well, I can say it started from when I was a kid because um, I used to, prior to becoming a makeup artist, I used to do um, na- like manicures and pedicures in the neighborhood. So I've always had an eye for um, the beauty industry. And then um, as I got older, like back in 2009, I started, you know, just doing makeup at home. I was working with Victoria's Secret and I was like, you know what? I think I might want to get into this. So I got into it. I, you know, did some research on how to get into the industry. Um, And then I landed my first job at Macy's um, as a beauty advisor for Clinique. And then it took off from there. Wow. That is amazing. Now, are you self-taught or did you take a lot of classes to learn this or... Um, it was it was a mixture of both. Um, I took some classes and some a lot of it was self-taught. Um, at the time, you know, working at Victoria's Secret, the um, location where I worked, we had like some eyeshadows, not really the full line. I don't know if you remember Victoria's Secret's makeup line. Um, uh-huh. it wasn't, the store I worked in, we didn't have everything. So little eyeshadows, customers would come in and want to try the eyeshadows on. And I was the go-to person. So I used to just, you know, do little eyeshadows. Some girls would come in and just to get their eyes done by me. And it all just started from there. Wow. Now, as a makeup artist, you know, you do shows uh, either fashion shows, you know, you do one-on-one, bridal, all of that stuff. But yeah. now, say at a fashion show, you're doing makeup and you have a group of models, but each designer wants something different. How do you guys handle that? Because you have like 25 models Mm -hmm. and you got to change the look. What do you guys do? Well, normally for, for shows, we tend to let the designers know like, Hey, you know, this is the look that we have because yes, in a perfect world, we would love to do all that Shazam (laughs) for the fashion show, but we have to think about time and the amount of models and also the makeup artists. Some are faster than some, so we're slower than some. So we have to take all of that into consideration. So um, it can become overwhelming when it's time to do a whole complete look. If it's a fact of just maybe changing a lip, color, then, you know, that's usually fine. But um, yeah, it can be challenging. And sometimes, you know, as I've been lead makeup artist for a couple of shows, I would just have to respectfully say, hey, you know, we're pressed for time. We have a show. Um, These are the looks. We can change a lip. But as far as like an entire look and just a look for every, Mm yeah. It, it, it's it's, yeah, it's totally it's, impossible as far as yeah, time is concerned. Now, awesome. do you design the look for the makeup when you're doing a show as a lead makeup artist, or does the designer tell you an idea of what they want? 
Um, so normally I would come up with the looks. Um, for instance, I was a lead, I'm the lead makeup artist for Harlem Fashion Week. Um, and along with um, the lead hairstylist, both of us would collaborate and say, hey, what do you think about this look as just a look that can go with any, any um, outfit, you know? So we try to do a look that just goes with everything. So normally it's really clean skin. Clean skin is what you want, that glowing clean skin and just something like a white eyeliner, it can go with anything. So if you would like to change a look, it would just be a matter of changing the lipstick. Okay. Now, how do you guys deal with people that have bad skin? Because, you know, everybody doesn't have the perfect canvas when you guys start. Do you ever suggest that they clean their skin off or do you say anything to them? Or do you just try to cover up with it? I mean, you know, because you have your precious time. So well, how does that work? Well, absolutely. When I'm when I'm working with a team um, as a lead makeup artist, you know, we all come together. I'm at the model. I'm at the um, the model calls. I'm there. And those are the things that we normally tell the producers of the show, like, hey, you know, let the models know in advance if you need to detox, you need to exfoliate, you know, try to take care of your skin, drink a lot of water up to the show. Now, um, sometimes some some model skin you know, just is not ready for, you know, for the show. I wouldn't say not ready, but it's not as clear yeah. as we'd like it to be. And that's okay. So, you know, we just work with what we can, or we would just give the model to maybe myself as a lead and I will, you know, go in and do what I have to do. But I um, try to give the other makeup artists the, make, the models who can easily just execute. But the ones as a lead, I'm not really doing makeup. So I'm like, okay, you know, I'll take on this model and I'll do what I need to Challenging do. Challenging ones, right? <laughs> I'll take them on. The challenging ones. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking with the magnificent Terry McDonald, makeup artist extraordinaire. We're going to say hello to our sponsors, and we'll be right back in just a moment. And remember, I am wearing Bling Darling Couture sunglasses, and my necklace is by the Queen of Socks. Back in just a moment. gentlemen we are back with makeup artist terry mcdonald now terry tell me a little bit about your approach to a photo shoot if you are say working with a photographer model maybe you know one or two models not too many uh what is that approach how does that begin well um normally how that begins when i'm whenever i'm going on set i always remain professional I'm always in all black. Those who know me, no matter what it is, I'm always in my all black and I come to the fashion, I come to the photo shoot. Um, I normally like to get there at least half an hour early so that I'm set up. Um, usually me and the, the photographer and I were in um, communication so that we know exactly what the look is, what's the mood. I would normally create the mood board and then we go and negotiate, okay, this is fine and so forth. And usually when I'm on set, I am not just a makeup artist. I am also, you know, I chime in, I give the models, you know, direction of how to pose, you know, where to turn, you know, so I'm working also like a creative director along with the photographer. I like that when I'm on set that all of us, the energy is there. We're all vibing and we're all working together to have a successful shoot, whether it's paid or not. I always give 110% because you never know who's there and who's who. Well, I'm glad you said that, Terry, because you know what? You do give 110%. I've seen you. I know your work. And this is why we're talking today, because I have been one of your admirers for a long time because of your work ethics, of how you do things and how you're so professional. And, and that is when I decided to interview a makeup artist. I was like, there's only one Terry McDonald to talk to. So, so you, know, you, you know, people see you know, that you are professional. People see it. So this is why, uh, you know, 
they're, they're looking to you toward uh, fabulous makeup. Now, what do you do if you have a client and they say, oh, I want this look, da 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 and they're not happy with the look? It's like, oh, that's not what I wanted, but this is what they told you. What do you do when a client's not happy with a look? Well, you know, to be honest with you, Sophia, I've never had that issue. And the reason you why- You've never had that problem, honey. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why, you know, not to be cocky, but the reason why I've never had that issue is because you, that's where the investigation piece comes in. You have to engage with your client. You have to investigate. Because sometimes our clients, even though they want makeup, they really don't know what they want. You know, we're the experts. So if exactly. that you really don't know what you want, it's my job to dig in, to see, you know, what's your everyday life like? What do you do when you're in it? What do you have time for? So that I can kind of picture the look, what the, my client wants. So, and every time I've used that same concept, I've always, I've never had that issue. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I love that. I never thought you did have that issue. But you know, sometimes you just wonder, whenever someone's doing any kind of hair, makeup service or anything like that, you just wonder what is the approach of the client just is like, Oh, I don't know. You know, after you've done all the work, you mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? So this is why we asked that question. Now, do you have a favorite celebrity makeup look? And if you have one, why? Like some people like that cat eye. Some, like I love, I love the eye of Nicki Minaj. I mm -hmm. like the way she does that little thing on her eye. You know, so I mean, is there any one celebrity uh, look that you like or anything? Um, I've always, I've always admired, um, Angela Bassett, the way that she, yeah. her makeup, her cheekbones, the highlighters in the right places is just always elegant, clean, fresh makeup. I've always admired her. And that's exactly how I like my makeup, clean, fresh, just everything is just where it needs to be. So I've always admired her. Excellent. Excellent. And in your opinion, what are the qualities that make a good makeup artist? What are those qualities? Those qualities, number one for me, is always have a willingness to learn. Because if you go in with the, with the mindset that, oh, I've been a makeup artist for 10, 12, for me, 12 years, and I don't need to know anything, I'm the best, I don't need, if you go in with that mindset, that's, you're automatically failing yourself. Trends change all the time. You have new and upcoming makeup artists that can teach you a trick or two, or maybe a way that she was doing an eyeliner, maybe someone can teach you how to do it quicker. You always have to have a willingness to learn. So that's number one. Number two is sharing your knowledge. So if you receive the knowledge, you received it from somewhere, right? So then share it, you know, sow your seeds, share your knowledge with other upcoming makeup artists, you know, try to build a community. So that's number two. Number three is finding your niche. What makes you you? Why should people come to you to do your for them to do for you to do their makeup? So finding your your purpose. Am I just gonna do you know clients on a client to client base? Do I really want to work for a magazine? Do I want to go to fashion show route? Do I want to do film? You gotta have to find your niche of where you want to be and what separates you from any other makeup artist. Because I mean, there's enough pie for everybody, but what what separates you? Exactly. Like what is your superpower, so to speak? Exactly. exactly. Now, how important is it to a makeup artist that they are published, whether it be on the cover or editorial? How important is that for your career? That's extremely important because it shows, number one, it shows your level of growth. Mm -hmm. It also, it also is confirmation for yourself that you're doing what you need to do and you're, you're leveling up. So to me, that's, that's very important. It's very important to not even just be published, but just to create content, to constantly creating so that you're, you're also you know, maximizing your skills. You're gaining new skills. You're gaining new experiences with models and photographers and how to operate and how to move. So you're all of that also is a part of your learning and development. So it's very important to try your best to collaborate with people and to you know, if it's free work, give you 110% because people are I always say people are always going to remember, how, you know, you as a person, you as an individual, how you interacted with them, not so much of your artistry skills, you can be a top, your artistry skills could be up there. But if your interaction was, eh, nobody cares, you know, nobody cares how good your artistry is. So people remember you by your the connection with you, their interaction, your vibe, your energy, more than they do about your artistry. So you have to take, they have, makeup artists should take all of those things into consideration. 
Excellent. Now, as a makeup artist, you use a lot of different brands. I'm sure that, you know, some people like this, some people like that, da 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 Do you have one brand of makeup that you find works better for you as far as, you know, just maybe the easy, you know, it's easy to use or something like that? Do you have a brand that you like? Um, yes, I have a few brands I like because I go to different brands for different things, <laughs> for different things. Um, but when it comes to um, complexion, um, I really do love NARS. I love NARS. Mm-hmm. NARS has great, you know, runway makeup. It's clean. It's I just really love the I love the packaging, the sleek classiness of it. I just absolutely love NARS. And I used to and I used to freelance with them, too. But I just love their entire brand. OK. And speaking of complexion, you know, as a makeup artist, you don't know all the time what complexion you're going to be working on. Correct. Can you tell me if what are the challenges of working with different complexions, almost in a group? Sometimes you walk into a fashion show and you've got um, from light all the way to super dark. So, you know, how do you work with that? Um, well, working with with complexion is all based off of the undertone. So you can you may not have all of the shades to fit everyone, but as long as you have the undertones where you're able to mix warm and 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 yellow undertones and create, then you should be okay. I always tell um, makeup artists when you're first starting out with your kit, I'm sure you know you don't want to buy all the foundations, but start off with a light, a really light one, a medium tone, and then you know kind of like in the middle of each, you know, variation of color and a really dark one. So if you can mix, you're able to mix and create the foundation color that would suit your client. Excellent. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking with the amazing Terry McDonald, makeup artist, and we're going to find out more about her fabulous career in just a moment. We're going to run over and say hello to our sponsors. Back in just a moment. We are back with the amazing Terry McDonald, makeup artist. And Terry, tell us a little bit about how you stay abreast of the different trends. Do you read fashion magazines? Do you go to like the international beauty shows? Do you go to the makeup shows? Do you take classes? What do you do? Um, I um, I research on YouTube I, from the different fashion shows that I attend to. Um, I'm always in tune with the color of the year. So the Pantone color of the year, um, I always get into that and, you know, um, look at the different textures of makeup. So I, I get my, my stay on trend through many different avenues. You know, I read magazines. I love essence magazines. I go through and look at the um, beauty segment and see what's going on. Um, I look at um, models on Vogue magazine to see what's trending as far also clothing too, because clothing goes hand in hand with makeup. So um, I also look at the clothing as well and just kind of just come up with, okay, this is what's going on. And that's how I stay on top of everything. Okay. Now, if someone is say uh, going to utilize you for makeup, Mm -hmm. do you do a phone consultation first or how does that work when they first start? They tell you, okay, I'm going to this event and I need like red carpet makeup. But I know you need to see the skin. You probably need to see maybe what they're wearing so that the colors are, not that you're going to match it to their outfit, but that it blends. 
So do you do phone consultations and stuff like that as well? Yes, I do. I always start with the phone cons um, consultation. Um, and also if the client is kind of unsure and doesn't have looks already saved to send me of what they're, of the makeup look that they're going for, then based off of my investigation via phone call or text, I would create a mood board of looks that I think um, would be suitable for you and, and based off of the investigation. And then I'll send them over and then I'll get a yay or a nay. And then I know what the look is. I'll make sure I have everything and we're all set. And you work from there. And, we and how comfortable are you with mature skin? Because, you know, everybody's not young that, you know, wants to wear makeup. And if you are a mature person, you cannot wear the same makeup you wore when you were 20 years old Absolutely. because your skin changes. And not only does your skin change, your look changes as well. Now, you may still have the red classic lip, mm -hmm. like I always have the red classic lip. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but things change. <laughs> so, so how do you deal with, uh, like a mature person, you know, with skin? So usually again, it goes right back to the investigation. Again, I investigate, you know, what were you using before? What, what is not working for you now? See what they were using before and see what's comparable to that. Now that your skin is more mature. Also with skincare, I stress skincare so much is extremely, extremely important because the makeup is only going to be as good as the skin underneath, right? So I start to find out, okay, well, what are you using on your skin for skincare? So this way I can know what type of makeup to choose for mature skin. They may not want a full foundation. They may just want a tinted moisturizer and just some concealer. So that's, again, it leads back to the investigation so that you can meet your client's needs. Excellent, excellent. I love it. I love the way you do things, Terry. Thank you. Now, have you ever thought of developing your own line of makeup? Because listen, you are doing a fabulous job. And I think that having your own line of makeup would be amazing for you. I know a young lady that, uh, and this is going back a few years, of course, mm -hmm. and she's a great makeup artist. She's actually in Sephora. She just got in Sephora. Mm -hmm. But I knew her when she lost her job. She used to have a corporate job. She lost her job. And she was like, you know what? I can do makeup. I love doing makeup. And I'm going to just do this. Right. And, you know, she started working with, she's a makeup artist, so she worked with different brands. Then she didn't like, she started to, you know, she didn't like, uh, you know, all of the colors, whatever. She began to develop, develop, develop. She got her own brand. She started teaching. And now she's in Sephora. Have you ever thought of having your own brand, Terry? It's so funny you said that because that's actually what I'm working on. <laughs> That's actually what I'm working on. Yes. Yeah, so it'll be coming very, very soon. Um, I'm super excited about it. Sometimes Sophia gives me anxiety, but um, I'm super, super excited about it. Um, the way that I'm approaching everything um, based off of my experiences of managing Mac and Sephora, you know, having that retail experience. Um, I think is really going to be beneficial to me and my and my cosmetic line. So definitely look out for it because I am. I'm going to stay in touch with you because I will support and I will buy. Yeah, I think it's very important that we support independent brands. Absolutely, it's coming. Yeah, we have to. Somewhere. So I think that's fabulous. That's yeah. so good. I'm so glad I hit that note. Yes, I'm so did. glad I touched on that question <laughs> because I think it like with all that you're doing, and as long as I've known you and you've been doing and just growing and growing, that the next thing was going to be your own line, and I love it. Now, <clears throat> inspiration for upcoming makeup artists. What inspiration or what advice could you give them? My advice to upcoming makeup artists is, again, to always have a willingness to learn. Always have a willingness to learn. Believe in yourself. When you go into a room with other makeup artists, never feel intimidated because guess what? Every single last makeup artist in that room have the jitters just as much as you do may even think that they're in, they may think that they're intimidated by you just as much as you're intimidated by them because everyone's so concerned about artistry skills never think that go in with confidence know that you got the skills you're there for a reason always have a willingness to learn always go in and give 110 percent, whether it's a paid gig or not because again i cannot stress you never know who's watching 
You never know who's there. You never know who's going to refer you. You never know. Go in, show up, and show out. All right. Now, that sounds fabulous. Mm -hmm. And now, Terry, if we can just get your social media handles, because, you know, people can follow you. They can hire you. You know, let's get those social media handles. Okay, so you can follow me on Instagram is at t.mcdonald cosmetics, traditional spelling, LLC. That's on Instagram. If you would like to book me for my services, you can send me email at t.mcdonald cosmetics at gmail.com. Um, if you would like to take a look at some of the things I've been getting into, some of my work, you can also check out my website at www.terrymac.com. All right, now, well, I want to thank you so much for being here today with me. I am an admirer of your work for a long, long time. And I am so happy to see you, you know, just elevating and elevating and elevating. And so I thank you for your time, Terry. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for ladies having me. And, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Sophia Davis. You're watching Fashion Avenue News. Only the best will do. And we'll see you next week.